is um, an international expert in media law, uh, a lawyer, uh, with extensive experience in litigating freedom of expression issues in Russia and also the director of the Mass Media Defense Center. So please, Mrs. Arapova, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, and uh, let me start with uh, uh, an introduction on uh, recent problems that Russia faces with regards to freedom of expression and media freedom. Uh, I will focus my presentation on two burning issues. Uh, first is multiplying restrictions on freedom of expression and media freedom in Russia, and second, climate of impunity. Um, uh, First, I would like to uh, bring your attention to the problem that the number of restrictions uh, on freedom of expression is growing really, really fast in Russia. Uh, and the situation uh, uh, with freedom of media um, uh, continues to be a, a, a high concern of uh, NGOs, but unfortunately not for the government. Journalists remain unable to cover the news freely, particularly with regards to continuous, top, uh, uh, continuous topics like human rights abuses in North Caucasus, government corruption, organized crime and police torture, violation of human rights in Sochi before Olympic Games, and finally, with regards to uh, Ukraine crisis at the moment. Uh, although the Constitution of Russian Federation provides the freedom of speech and freedom of the press, uh, the Russian media does not consider itself free. Uh, being very much pressured by authorities, harassed, convicted for practicing profession, and government uses the country's politicized um, and corrupt law enforcement and judiciary to prosecute independent journalists. Uh, during the last two years, Russian parliament uh, have introduced a whole package of new restrictions to media work, internet and freedom of expression, on a variety of topics, starting from uh, LGBT issues, territorial unity of Russia, patriotism, privacy, etc. Uh, and this number is growing, which is really worrying. An increased number of internet users and popularity of internet resources, including blogs, forums, uh, and uh, live journal and social media, no doubt provide a wide range of, of alternative sources of information for Russian public. And more and more people gain their independent, some independent opinion and um, uh, participate in public debate online rather than read news from uh, traditional media. Uh, now the number of internet users in Russia is estimated at about 50 million, which is a third part of population of, of Russia. Uh, during last year, government introduced a method, new methods uh, to control internet and online free discussion on issues of public concern. First, the blacklist of websites have been introduced in 2012. Um, and certain information, uh, if it's pub uh, published on online, uh, could be blocked without any um, due um, judicial process. Uh, the last law that enters into force in August 1st this year is to force bloggers who have over 3,000 visitors a day to register as media. The funny part about this law is that uh, it's, uh, as we say, it's quite uh, raw. It's, uh, it's not formula formulated well enough. So basically anybody, any legal entity or pri private uh, person who has a, a website and this way website is popular enough or uh, someone published a story or news uh, or piece of opinion uh, today which uh, became uh, like top discussion during the day could be registered as blogger, as media outlet, even if it's a website, a corporate website, or even if it's a website of state uh, authorities. For instance, the General Prosecution Office website has over 3,000 uh, 3, visitors a day, and a blog, a uh, personal blog of Dmitry Medvedev, the Prime Minister, has over 2 million of uh, followers. So basically, according to this law, all that has to be registered as media after August 1st. So we don't really understand how that will all work. But still, uh, this uh, law uh, denies a possibility to publish any information or any opinion um, uh, anonymously, So, which, which is uh, already a problem. Uh, another uh, mean to control internet is a uh, possibility to block website with no due process 
and core decision, uh, which is actually a burning issue at the moment, and a few cases are um, uh, in the court of law. Uh, recently adopted amendments to the law on information allow to block access to any website, including social media, without any due judicial process, as I said. And uh, um, this, uh, the grounds that uh, introduced by law uh, include uh, information, uh, uh, information that is published on website if, it's, uh, if it contains a call to participate in uh, public disorder in uh, extremism activity <coughs> or in uh, public events which organized with a breach of the order established by law. Basically, that law um, focuses on to control dissemination of information on protests. Uh, if you publish on your website or on Facebook page that uh, tomorrow will be a, uh, a riot or a meeting against something or in support to something. Uh, and you don't have a permission from lo local authorities, that could be considered as one of the grounds to block your web page. And uh, on uh, the very first day this law entered into force, that was um, February 1st, four uh, live journal blogs uh, have been blocked uh, simultaneously, and that was Saturday. And uh, according to the law, a uh, decision to block uh, uh, is uh, made, supposed to be made by uh, a prosecutor general himself or his deputies. I really, really <coughs> doubt that these people have been working on Saturday to block two particular private blogs on live journal. But more worrying uh, was the, uh, the case when five oppositional media, online media and blogs, uh, including the blog of um, uh, Alexei Navalny, have been blocked blocked uh, in the middle of March. Um, among this uh, oppositional web uh, online media was uh, Grani.ru, Echo Moskvi, uh, because they had uh, Alexei Navalny's blog, Kasparov RU and uh, Daily Journal, Yezhidnevny uh, Journal RU. Uh, those websites are still blocked, apart from Echo Moskvi, which uh, deleted Alexei Navalny's blog within two hours and they've been opened uh, by the government, but others are still blocked and challenging this decision in the court of law. And I have to say that Mass Media Defense Center that I lead uh, participates in these court uh, hearings and uh, what we face is very far from uh, justice, unfortunately, because uh, uh, a representative of the Office of General, uh, the Prosecutor General, uh, at the hearing of Grani, Grani RU case, uh, openly said that they, they blocked this online media not because of a particular publication which contained this call to participate in uh, mass uh, uh, in public disorder or extremism activity, but, uh, I quote, uh, they blocked this online media for a combination of different publications and general directions of website. So basically, we don't like you, we block you, and then you just go to the court and try to uh, find your way around it. Uh, so we still stuck in the court of law and we uh, have uh, this strong feeling that uh, the only possibility to resolve this situation is uh, uh, apply to European Court of Human Rights, but that takes uh, time. And the Russian uh, public still doesn't have access to this website. You can enter this website from outside Russia with no problems, but uh, Russian uh, readers uh, and citizens, they cannot read information on this website, they cannot publish their opinion, they cannot participate in a discussion on this um, uh, website, which actually published information of public concern a lot more than official media. Among other restrictions, that have been introduced recently is um, a restriction on dissemination of information online uh, which contains obscene language, which is understand understandable in a way. But the problem is that once public authorities, uh, control authorities, uh, find information which uh, contains an obscene um, uh, language, they can uh, close, they can uh, block this website again without any notice, which is uh, which we believe is uh, a bit too much uh, as a pure control of a decent language uh, that media uh, or visitors use to discuss uh, information published on online. Uh, another 
a restriction is uh, a liability for websites and online media for posting active hyperlinks leading to the illegitimate, uh, illegitimate content. Uh, for doing that, and that was uh, two hyperlinks um, published by uh, another uh, online media um, from St. Petersburg, it's, uh, it's called rosbalt.ru, they published uh, uh, hyperlinks to YouTube uh, video contest, uh, content. So they've been, uh, they've been uh, um, closed as a media, they lost their license uh, to be uh, um, considered as a media. Uh, we have new li uh, liability introduced for publishing personal data and information about privacy of people. Uh, there is new liability for revealing uh, the identity of the child victim of crime. Uh, there is a new concept of blasphemy introduced, uh, uh, which is uh, not, uh, it's, which is insult to the feelings of believers. Uh, and uh, it's a, a big shame to say that Russia is probably the only country which decriminalized defamation and then recriminalized it half a year later. So we. Uh, and uh, even though uh, the new version of a uh, provision of the criminal code on um, liable does not have uh, doesn't have um, uh, a sanction such as uh, imprisonment as it used to, uh, to have, but uh, the fines, uh, financial sanctions, increased harshly. Now it's up to 130,000 euros, which is for a regular Russian journalist is unbelievable. Uh, so. And uh, I'll just bring you one uh, simple example, which uh, uh, is uh, a burning issue at the moment. And we are, again, involved in uh, helping this media outlet in this particular case. Um, there is uh, online media in the very, very far east of Russia. It's an island called Sakhalin, which is like nine, nine hours flight from Moscow to the uh, east. So there is an um, online media called sakhalinmedia.ru and they published uh, a story that, uh, about uh, fishers uh, uh, who live in a small f uh, fisher village in Sakhalin and it's a f fishing industry region. Uh, they published a story how they sent a letter to Mr. Putin, the president of Russian Federation, complaining about uh, a very wealthy person who is controlling all fishing business in this area. And this person, by, by chance, is an MP from this region in the, uh, in the Russian parliament. So because publishing of this story, their premises, uh, well, this MP uh, initiated a criminal uh, libel case against uh, online media, uh, premises of uh, media outlet have been searched by police. Uh, police seized all hard drives, laptops, other data storage devices from the office, stop, stopping working work from taking place. And uh, uh, later searches um, were also held in headquarters of the same media in uh, the capital of Far East region of Russia, the city of Vladivostok. Uh, Editor-in-chief have been named as official suspect by the police and criminal defamation case as a result of publication of this critical article. And uh, now the case is about to be sent to the court of law. And I uh, have to mention, and it's quite important, that uh, a group of 14 investigators is working on this case. <coughs> 14 people are working to investigate, investigate something that is not even a ground for a civil defamation claim. And uh, if, we consider, uh, if we compare with the other cases, a case of Alek Kashin, who is a reporter to Kamersan Daily, who have been uh, deadly uh, um, beaten up three years ago, uh, only one investigator is working on a case, on this case, trying to identify who is, um, uh, who was involved in that and who is responsible. A case of uh, attack on Alek Kashin <coughs> Uh, is still under investigation and no guarantee that it will be, it, it will find itself in a court of law. Uh, and by saying that, I have to say that uh, the climate of impunity in Russia uh, is still uh, um, quite um, serious, if I may say so. Uh, for the last 10 years, about 270 journalists have been murdered in Russia. And I don't want to put it as numbers because, as it was rightly said, uh, on the, in the panel this morning, when we say numbers uh, uh, talking about killed journalists, we don't feel sorrow and uh, drama of 
families, of colleagues, uh, uh, but uh, it's, it's difficult to name all 270. But I just uh, say that uh, if, uh, a name that you all, uh, all know, Anna Politkovskaya. Uh, Anna Politkovskaya was a reporter um, of Nova Gazeta. She was murdered eight years ago, and the case of her murder was just decided by the court uh, last week, I think, or a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was a decision, a verdict reached by a jury, uh, but the mastermind who is behind this is still uh, not known. And I really doubt that we will ever know his name. But uh, that's a name that the whole globe already knows. Uh, but there are other uh, journalists who are working in regions of Russia, and you might not know their name. Uh, poor Ricardo was struggling today trying to pronounce the name of Dagestani uh, journalist, a journalist from North Caucasus, Ahmed Nabi Ahmed Nabiev. Uh, he was working in North Caucasus, uh, reporting on local newspapers and working on Caucasus Note, which is a well-known online media f uh, focusing and reporting on issues of uh, uh, civil society in North Caucasus and, and South Caucasus. And uh, Ahmed Nabi was uh, murdered uh, about a year ago. He was murdered on 9th of July last year. And his uh, a case of his murder is still under investigation, and I'm afraid uh, investigation is not effective. Uh, shockingly, nine out of ten murders uh, are not uh, murderers of journalists are not even prosecuted, making the killing of journalists cheap, easy, and virtually risk-free method of silencing critics. Um, and a lot of them have been threatened prior murder. And unfortunately, investigators don't really pay uh, decent attention to this fact. Uh, Ahmed Nabi, who I just mentioned, um, he was attacked under the same exact circumstances a half a year before he was killed in July. And uh, investigate, uh, investigators opened a case of uh, damage of his uh, possessions, not attempt to murder, because uh, his car, uh, he happened to uh, hide behind his car. His, car, his uh, car caught a few bullets from a person who was trying to kill him. So uh, these examples are really worrying and unfortunately the climate of impunity grows as the numbers of uh, killers are free from uh, justice. Uh, and I also have um, uh, to say that uh, we, it, it seems that we have a different view on problems with uh, official um, uh, law enforcement bodies because the head of Federal Investigation Committee, Mr. Bastrykin, said in his interview to News Nova Gazeta newspaper that law enforcement agencies have been solving the vast majority of murders in recent years, as many as four out of five. Uh, but that is not applicable to cases of murders of uh, journalists and human rights defenders, unfortunately. Um, and uh, to sum up, I'll give you a few examples of uh, another recent uh, legal initiatives, and we'll end uh, with that, uh, that now are under discussion in the Russian parliament. And I have to say, as a media lawyer working on freedom of expression in Russia and protection of journalists for the last 18 years, I've never heard anything so absurd. Uh, but unfortunately, since these discussions are not that public, we don't, we, we don't have a possibility to react or introduce our um, uh, critics to these um, uh, leg legislative initiatives. And I'm, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we find these initiatives as law within a very uh, short period of time. So during the last half a year, apart from the adopted laws that I've mentioned, uh, there were at least 18 initiatives to restrict freedom of expression and internet, including <coughs> such absurd as the law on protection of public from information uh, and criminal liability for undermining of patriotic values, whatever it means, and even a ban on any criticism towards official understanding of the role of Soviet Union in the Second World War, which is almost uh, a ban on historical discussion. So uh, having said that, uh, I have to conclude that uh, uh, the, the situation that we experience, that we live in at the moment in Russia, is very worrying, uh, and uh, journalists are not able to cover, uh, to um, 
to do what they actually have to do as journalists under their professional task and mission uh, properly. And regardless that this depressing, the depressing picture, we have positive experience in defending journalists, working very hard, providing legal defense and um, protection to them. And uh, that provides, uh, uh, proves that it is possible uh, to protect freedom of expression, even uh, risking our own um, uh, stability, sometimes life. And uh, I really hope that the uh, situation will improve. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs.